quick demo of the video. This is an Angular 7 tutorial to implement CRUD operations insert, update and delete in Firestore or Cloud Firestore. Here we have the final output of the sample project. Now let me show you how to insert a new record. Now let's submit the form. So here we have inserted new record for Jennifer Acosta. In order to update the record, click on this row so that it will populate the corresponding employee details inside this left form here. Now let's make the required changes. Finally submit the form. So here we have updated corresponding employee details. In order to delete the record, click on this trash icon here, then confirm the operation. So here we have successfully deleted the record. I hope you will find this tutorial helpful for your upcoming Angular 7 projects. So please watch till the end of the video. Before starting this video, I would like to ask you a favor. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video. If you are new here, please be subscribed to this channel and click on the bell icon to get notification about my new videos. Most of the video lesson here also has a written blog post. You can find the link in video description. You can grab code from the as well. What's up YouTube? Welcome to Code Affection. This is an Angular 7 tutorial for beginners. In this video, we will implement Angular 7 CRUD operations in Firestore. Without further ado, let's get started. Here is my Visual Studio Code Editor. I will be using this IDE for the application development. First of all, open the folder where we want to save the project. In order to create an Angular project, we have to execute Angular CLI commands from command prompt or terminal from the IDE. I will use terminal from Visual Studio Code Editor. In order to create the project, you can use this command ng new. I will name this application as Angular 7 Firestore. Hit enter. Would you like to add Angular routing? No. Which style sheet format would you like to use? I will stick with CSS. Hit enter. As a result of the command execution, here we have created the project folder with name Angular 7 Firestore. Currently, it is installing some default packages from npm, so it will take some time, so please be patient. So here we have the brand new Angular 7 project. In previous videos, we have implemented Angular CRUD operations with Firebase or real-time database in Firebase project. This is the first time we discuss Firestore CRUD with Angular project. Now before continuing with this project, let's discuss the difference between real-time database and Firestore in a Firebase project. You can see the comparison in Firebase website itself. As you can see here, Firebase started with real-time database. It is considered as a solution for mobile apps that requires real-time syncing of data. But Firestore is an improved version of real-time database. Here is the main reason to switch from real-time database to Firestore. It is rich in feature, faster queries and scales better than real-time database. So here is the main difference. In real-time database, data is stored as a JSON tree. While in Firestore, it is a collection of organized documents. This picture shows the difference between them. Here we have the real-time database. Inside that data stored as a JSON tree and here we have the Firestore data model. Data stored in a structured manner like key value pair. In real time database, data model becomes complex for bigger applications. In case of queries, real time database supports limited functions. As a next step, we have to create a Firebase project. For that, you can go to this website here, console dot firebase.google.com then click on add project I will name this project as Firestore CRUD then scroll to bottom then accept these terms here click on create project so here we are inside the project overview now let's create a database for that go to database here we have to create a DB inside this Firestore, so click on this create database button here. I will select the test mode so that we don't need any permission to work with the database. Click on enable. 
compared to sql dbs like sql or mysql table in sql dbs is treated as collection in no sql dbs like this first row and table rows in sql dbs is treated as a document in no sql db so first of all let me create employees collection in order to store employee documents for that click on add collection here since we are working with employee details inside the project i want to name this collection as employees click on next in this second step you can add the first document into this collection first store document contains a set of key value pairs for example i will add the field name here field 1 i will enter the value here if you need more fields you can add that here field 2 then here we have the value here we have the document id to uniquely identify a specific document from the collection i will leave this field as empty to store auto generated file store id now click on save so here we have the newly added document here we have the corresponding auto generated id and here we have the fields now let's delete this sample document from this employees collection in order to work with this firebase project from our angular project we have to install few npm packages for that first of all i will navigate inside the project folder here now let's install the required packages npm i4 install double dash save in short you can type yes here first package will be firebase itself and we need another package angular forward slash fire So here we have installed those two packages. Now we have to add this Firebase collection details into this Angular project here. For that, you can click on this web icon here. Then copy this object from config part here. Then back to the project, I want to save those details inside the environment.ts file that you can see here. Environments.ts Inside that, I'm going to add one more property firebase config and i will paste the connection object details here then back to app.module.ts file here now inside this app module we have to configure firebase project using angular fire modules with this connection details here first of all we have to import angular fire module which is from angular fire We have to import angular fire module like this we have to import angular fire store module also so let me copy this and pasting below that and we will import that from angular fire then fire store and we have to import angular fire store module now in order to configure the app for firebase project we have to add this angular fire module inside this imports array here and we have to call this function initialize app inside that we have to provide this connection details that we have saved here which is from this constant here so that you can type here at the same time you have this auto prediction here if you click on that it will add the corresponding import statement for the constant here now inside this environment constant we have this firebase config property that we have to provide here environment.firebase config after that we have to add this angular file store module also let me copy this and pasting here now let me save all of these modifications here now let's run this application for that you can use this angular cli command ng serve double dash o it will compile and open this application in your default web browser now this is how the fresh angular 7 project looks like in order to design this application i will be using bootstrap so go to this website getbootstrap.com now click on get started now we have to include the css and javascript reference inside the project so let me copy this css reference then back to the application open index.html then we have to paste that just before this head and tag here now let's add the javascript reference before this body and tag here 
let me copy this and pasting here along with this bootstrap we also need phone over some icons so let me search for cd and style sheet reference for phone over some icons i will be using this style sheet here back to the project now let's add one more link here inside that i will paste the copied href now before continuing with this project let me show you the structure of this application for that i will create one more file here i will name this file as app structure.txt inside that let me paste the structure of the application that we want to build so first of all we will have this parent component employees inside that we will have these child components employee and employee list and here we have the shared folder inside that we have this employee service and employee model class also without further ado let's create these component model and service classes here for that i'm going to open one more terminal here then navigate inside the project folder first of all i will create this parent component employees for that we can do this ng g4 generate c4 component and here we have to create employees component newly created employees component files can be seen inside this employees folder here we have one css file html file one typescript file along with that we have extra file with extension spec.ts which is for test purpose we don't need that spec.ts file so we can remove that from here same for this default component also app component dot spec dot ts now let's create these child components employee and employee list for that we can use the previous command with few modifications we have to create the component inside this employees folder here so we can do this employees forward slash employee and if you don't need that test file with extension spec.ts we can add this flag here spec is equal to false hit enter so here we have the newly created component without this spec.ts file like this we have to create one more child component employee list so i will use the previous command with few modifications we have to create employee list component hit enter so here is the new component employee list now we have to create the service and model class inside the shared folder for that you can use this command ng g4 generate s4 service we have to create employee service class so we just need to type employee here but we have to create this service class inside the shared folder so we can do this shared forward slash employee we have not yet created the shared folder inside this project directory this command will create the folder if there is no such folder this service command also create a spec.ts file we don't need that so we can specify that with this flag spec is equal to false hit enter so here we have the newly created employee service class inside this shared folder like this we have to create this model class unfortunately there is no specific command to create a model class in angular cli instead we can use the ng command for class with few modifications so this is what we do ng g4 generate then we have to create a class in short you can use cl here we have to create that class inside the shared folder and we will name that class as employee so this ng command for class will create a file with this name employee.ts as per the best practice or recommendations we will add this model.ts suffix to that file name for that we can add this flag here type is equal to model hit enter so here we have the model file employee.model.ts inside that we have this employee class now back to index.html inside the body tag you can see this component tag app root 
it will be replaced by the default component of an Angular application which is app component.html here. That means this whole HTML is responsible for this default view of the application here. Now let's modify this design as per our requirement. Instead of this default HTML, I'm going to add a div with class container from Bootstrap. Inside this div, I want to show the parent component HTML which is employees here. So corresponding selector is here. Let me copy this. And we want to add a tag for this selector inside this div here. Now open employees.component.html. Inside this employees component HTML, we want to show child components employee and employee list using bootstrap grid system. So first of all, we need a div with class row. And here we have the first column div with class call md5 like this we need one more column so i will copy this and pasting below that so this column will take seven seven plus five we have total 12 columns in grid system inside this first column we want to show the employee component html so i will copy the component selector from here and we need to create a tag for the selector like this we have to add employee list component inside the second column here so i will copy this selector from here then make a tag for this selector let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application so here we have the employee component inside the second column we have employee list component inside this first column we will show the form for insert and update operation Inside this employee list component, we will show a table to list all inserted employee records. First of all, I will show you how to design the form inside this employee component. For that, we have to add properties into this model class employee here. First of all, we have the ID property, which is of the type string, which is used to uniquely identify a single record or document from the Firestore collection. After that, we have full name of the employee. After that, we have EMP code. Then we have position. Finally, we have mobile. All of these properties are of the type string. So I will copy this and paste in here. Now, in order to design the form inside employee component HTML, first of all, we have to define a property of this model class inside this component TypeScript file and we have to use that inside this HTML. But when we have properties which is to be shared among more than one components, we will add that property inside this service class here. We will inject this employee service inside this app module.ts and thereby we are creating a single instance of employee service class and we will share that instance among these components employee and employee list. The model property which is to be used for designing the form is to be shared among these components employee and employee list. So I will add that inside this employee service class here and we will do the injection inside this app module.ts. So let's look how to do that. Here we have the employee service class. Here I will create a property form data which is of the type employee class while typing this employee here you can see this auto complete inside that we have this employee class if you click on that corresponding employee import statement will be added at the top now let's inject this inside this app module.ts file here you just need to add employee service class inside this providers array here corresponding import statement will be added at the top now open employee component typescript file we have to create a property of the type service class here private service which is of the type employee service class so here we have the service instance which is injected in app module.ts file now we can use the service class property form data in order to design the form inside this employee component.html let me get rid of this default text h1 with class display for from bootstrap 
inside that I will name this app as EMP register. After that we have the form. We don't need this action attribute instead I will add the local reference form is equal to ng form. Of course inside this form we will have input controls so I want to prevent autocomplete for those input controls from previous posted data. For that I will add this autocomplete attribute and I will set it as off. First of all I will add a div with class form group from bootstrap. Inside the div we will have an input control with class form control form hyphen control. We don't need this type attribute by default input controls will have the type text. So I will remove this. Then I will add the name attribute. I will set it as full name. And then we have to add a local reference. Full name is equal to ng model from Angular. Now let's define the two-way data binding for this control. For that we have to add this banana symbol here. Inside that we have ng model which is equal to here we have to provide the property which is to be binded into this input control. Inside this component TypeScript file we have the single instance of the service. Inside this service class we have defined this form data property. Inside that we have the full name of the employee. So here we can bind the property like this. First of all we have the service. Inside that we have form data. Inside that full name. Since we don't have a label for this input control I will add this placeholder attribute here. Which is equal to full name. Like this we have to add three more input text box for remaining properties. So let me copy this and pasting below that three times. Now let's change the attributes accordingly. First of all we have position. EMP code. Finally we have mobile. Now I want to show these input controls for employee code and mobile in a single line. For that I will add this div with class form hyphen draw from bootstrap. Inside that we can add these two divs here. Let me cut this and paste here. Each of these divs here will take the half width of this parent. For that we can add this call md6 class from bootstrap. So call md6. Let me copy this. Pasting below for the second div here. After all we have to add one more div with class form group which is for submit button. So we have a button which is of the type submit. It will have classes btn then btn lg so that this button will be larger than from its default normal size. After that we have this class btn block so that this button will take the entire width of the parent div here. After all I want to add a background color so I will add this class btn info. Button text will be submit. Here we have designed this form using template driven approach from Angular. In order to work this approach we have to add corresponding module inside this app module.ts file here. First of all I will add the corresponding import statement here. We have to import forms module from angular forms. Now let's add the same class inside this imports array here. Now let me save all of these modifications. 
then back to the application boom so here we have the required form for insert and update operation now if you inspect this web page here we can see few console errors here it is related to the data binding for these input controls because all of these full name position and employee code properties are not initialized inside this service class here we just declare this form data as a property of the type employee class now we have to initialize properties inside this form data that we can do inside this typescript file here for that i'm going to define a new function here reset form it has a single parameter form which is of the type ng form from angular click on this so that it will add the corresponding import statement here inside this function first of all we have to reset the form for that we just need to do this we will call this reset form function from the object form after that we have to reset the property this dot service dot form data and here we have to provide an object with reset values so first of all we have the id I will set it as null and then we have full name I will set it as empty string after that we have three more properties so I will copy this and pasting below that three times this is for position employee code and mobile now we have to call this function inside this ng on a lifecycle hook here this dot reset form function can be called here for some cases we may not have a value for this parameter form so i want to make this property as nullable here and i will add an if clause here if form parameter is not null then only we have to call the reset form function let me save this back to the application here so we don't have any console error left now before submitting this form i want to show you how to implement validations inside the form i just want to make this full name text box as a required field for that i will add this required attribute for this input control here just add this required attribute save then back to the application here if you inspect this full name text box here you can see few classes which starts from ng like ng pristine ng invalid and ng touched ng pristine means there is no change of value for this control from its default value means after showing this form there is no change of value for the control and we have ng invalid class means this control is not valid because we have applied the required attribute for the controls so there should be some text inside the control before the form submission then only this control will be valid and we have the final class ng touched initially it will have the class ng untouched when we place cursor inside this control it will replace with this class ng touched if i enter something inside this control here ng pristine is replaced with ng dirty means there is a change from its default value ng invalid is replaced with ng valid means this control is valid based on these ng classes here we can show validation error indication for the control whenever an input control becomes invalid i will add a red border around the control for that i will add few css rules inside this global style sheet here styles dot css here we have the rule if an input control has these two classes ng touched and invalid we will apply the red border around the control let me save this reload this page if you click inside and click outside ng invalid and ng touched will be applied to the control and thereby we have applied these css rules here now along with this red border i want to show a validation error message showing this field is required just below the control for that i will add the div just below this input control here we need a div with class validation error inside that we will have this message this field 
is required and i want to add the corresponding class styles inside this styles.css here i have already prepared the css rules let me paste that here if you leave this div as it is here it will be shown all the time we want to show this div when this full name text box is invalid even after user focus out from the control so that condition can be applied to this div here using ng if directive from angular ng if and here we have the condition using the local reference full name full name dot full name dot invalid and it is touched let me save this then back to the application initially you can see that this div is hidden let me focus in then focus out so here we have met the condition the control is touched and still it is invalid if i enter something inside the control validation succeeded now finally regarding this form validation i want to disable the submit button when this form as a whole is not valid that we can do here using disabled attribute we will apply this disabled attribute here based on the condition we will apply this attribute when the form is invalid form dot invalid save then back to the application initially this form is not valid that is why we have a blurred submit button here if i enter a random full name here submit button is enabled now let's submit the form so that we can insert a new record into firestore db so first of all we have to add the submit event for this form here so here we have the submit event when we submit this form we will call this function on submit into that we will pass this form local reference form now let's define this function inside the typescript file function name will be on submit for this function we have a single parameter form it's of the type ng form class first of all i will declare a variable data inside that we have to store the employee details from this form here so here we have the local reference of the form using this form object we can retrieve the values from input controls like this form dot value property will contain an object containing those input controls values now we have to insert this employee record into firestore db collection for that first of all we have to create a property of angular firestore here private firestore which is of the type angular firestore now in order to insert the new document into firestore db collection we just need to do this this dot firestore dot collection we need to insert the record into this collection employees and here we just need to call this add function inside that we can pass this data property here after insert or update operation we have to reset this form to its initial state for that we can call this function reset form function reset form into that we have to pass this form object now let me save all of these modifications here now let's try to insert a new employee record now let's submit the form since form is reset to its initial state insert operation must be successful let me check the firestore db here reload here we have the employees collection with a single employee record for ashton cox in most of the time after insert or update operation i want to show a notification saying operation when successful for that i will be using npm package ngx toaster in order to install this package we can use this npm command here back to the application i'm going to open one more terminal here then navigate inside the project folder 
Now let's paste the command here. Hit enter. So here we successfully installed the package. Now back to the npm page here we have to install this angular animation package also. In latest versions of angular this package is already installed. As you can see inside this package.json file here we have already installed the package angular animations. So we can skip that installation. After that we have to add the package style sheet toaster.css into the application. We have installed this package inside this directory. Inside that we have this toaster.css. Now let's add this reference into the project. Let me copy this. Then back to the application. Open angular.json file. Inside that let me search for styles array here. So here we can add that reference. Now after that we have to add corresponding modules into app.module.ts. These are the modules, browser animations module, toaster module. Let me copy these uh, import statement from here. Then back to the application, open app.module.ts file here. Let me paste those uh, import statement here. Now we have to add this inside this import array here. After that we have toaster module and from this toaster module we have to call this for root function. Now let's look how to use this toaster module inside this employee component here. For that we just need to create a private parameter here private toaster which is of the type toaster uh, service. So while we type the class name here we have the prediction if you click on that it will add the corresponding import statement. Now let's call the notification from this toaster parameter after this reset form here. This dot toaster dot success function can be called. We will show the message submitted successfully. After that we can provide the title for this notification. I will set it as EMP register which is the application name. Now let's check how this notification works. First of all we have to save all of these modifications. Since we have made modifications outside this SRC folder it would be better to restart this server here so in order to stop this server you can use the shortcut ctrl c then type y hit enter and you can use the same command ng serve double dash o after that back to the application here i'm going to insert a new employee here now let's submit the form so here we have the success notification submitted successfully. If you check this fast.db here you can see the newly inserted record for Gina Jane's. Now let's look how to list all of these inserted employees inside this employee list component here. Okay. For that first of all inside this service class here we will define a function to retrieve all of those documents from fast.db. In order to work with fast.db we have to add this private parameter like we have done inside the employee component fast.o which is of the type angular fast.o. Now let's define the function here get employees. Now inside the function we just need to do this this dot fasto dot collection and we have to work with employees collection employees and from that we can call this value changes function here. So this value changes function returns an observable containing these employee details here except this id of the document. We need these ids in order to implement operations like update. So instead of this value changes function we will call another function snapshot changes function. So this function will return an observable. So we can return that observable from this function here. Now let's call this function inside the employee list component here. 
So first of all, we have to add the private property for the service class service, which is of the type employee service class. Now we will call the get employees function inside this ng on it lifecycle hook here. This dot service dot get employees function can be called. Since this function returns an observable, we can subscribe to that here. And here we have the arrow function with a single parameter response. Since this get employees function returns an observable of the type document change action, I will rename this parameter as action array. In order to store the employees collection from the observable, I will declare a new property here, list, which is of the type employee model class array. Employee, click on this class, and it's of the type employee array. Now we will store the employees array here. This dot list is equal to action array dot map function can be called. Inside that we have the arrow function with single parameter item. Now inside this function we just need to return an object containing details of employee. So we just need to do this item dot dot payload dot doc dot data function can be called so this function will return an object containing these much details not this id so we have to retrieve this id also so we will do this we will return an object here and we will use the latest destructuring syntax from javascript so this object will be destructured and it becomes a property of this outer object here. So we can do this id is equal to item dot payload dot doc dot id property and we have to cast this object into an employee because we are going to assign this into this employee array here. So we can do this as employee class. Now using this list property, we can show employees inside an HTML table here. So first of all, let me get rid of this default HTML. Instead, I will add a table with classes from bootstrap, table, then table, hyphen, hover. First of all, we have the T head part. First of all, we have the employee name. Then we have position. After that, we have mobile. Finally, I will add an extra column for actions like delete. Now let's add the data inside this t-body part here. Here we have the tr element. We are going to iterate this tr as much as employees that we have inside this list property here. For that, we will be using ng4 directive from Angular star ng4 is equal to let emp of list. So we are going to iterate through this employee array. On each iteration, current employee will be saved inside this emp property here. Inside the first column, we will show the full name of employee. So we will use the string interpolation from Angular emp dot full name along with this full name i want to show the employee code also so before this full name i will show emp code i want to separate these two with an hyphen after that i want to show the position emp dot position finally we have the mobile after all we have the delete button so i will add this anchor element first of all we have btn then text danger inside this 
we don't need this hr of attribute here let me get rid of that inside this anchor element we want to show a phone over some icon so we will do this i with classes far then far hyphen trash let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application <clears throat> that's it here we have few mistakes with string interpolation i think so we have to add the close brace also let me copy this and pasting here save then back to the application here that's it here we have listed all of the employees that we have inserted into this firestore db collection employees now let's look how to update firestore document in order to update an existing employee record users should click on this row here so we will populate the corresponding employee details inside this left form here before that when we hover on this row here we want to have pointer cursor so i will add this css here now we want to add on click events for these td cells here so back to the component html i will add the click event here click and we will call another function on edit into that function we will pass this employee object now let's define this function before that i will add this same function to the rest of the td cells except the last cell which is for delete operation now let's define this function so here we have the function on edit with a single parameter emp which is of the type employee model class inside this function we just need to fill this corresponding employee details inside this form here so we can do this this dot um service dot form data which is the property that we have binded into this form controls here we will update that with emp object here instead of assigning this object directly into this form data property i will make a copy of this one and then assign to this because when we directly assign this property into this form data whenever we make changes inside this full name here corresponding changes will be shown here also we don't need that so i will make a copy after that we will assign that into this form data property object dot assign function can be called and here we have the first parameter which is an empty object after that we can pass the emp object here let me save all of these modifications back to the application here now let's select this employee for edit operation so here we have populated corresponding selected employee details okay now if you want to edit the corresponding employee you can make the required changes here then click on this submit button okay so in order to do that we will use the same submit event which we have already wired up here inside that we have already implemented insert operation now we have to accommodate update operation also in order to implement update operation we need document id which is not the inside this form parameter because we have not yet added that into this form element here so let's add a hidden field inside this form input input will be hidden and we have to add the name local reference and data binding so let me copy this and pasting here now let's make the required changes name will be id that's it now let me save this then back to the application if you click on this then inspect this input control just above this input element you can see the hidden field inside that we have the corresponding id of the document now let's implement the update operation inside the submit event initially we have set this id as null so during insert operation id will have the value null so here we have the if close if form dot value dot id if it is equal to null we will do the insert operation sorry instead of valid we have value and here we have the else block 
inside that we have to implement the update operation in order to update a file store document we just need to do this this dot file store dot document function is to be called inside that we have to reference the corresponding document so first of all we have the employees collection inside that we have a document with this given id so we will concat this id property here finally we just need to call the update function inside that we have to pass an object of employee containing new details of the fields so we will pass this data variable here but here we have a problem since we are passing this data variable here it contains the id of the employee also we don't need to mess with id we just need to update rest of the fields so we will remove the id from this data property here for that we just need to call this delete function and we can do this data dot id is to be removed since we are directly assigning this object into this data variable here whatever changes made inside this data will be reflected inside this form object also so in order to avoid that we will make a copy of the object and then we will assign that into this data variable here so we will do this object dot assign function can be called as a first parameter we have an empty object and then we will pass this form value let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application here in order to check update operation is working for all the fields here i will add this star suffix to every fields here then submit the form so here we have updated all the employee fields now let's look how to delete file store document for that we just need to add click even for this delete icon here so back to the component html employee list component html and then i will add a click event for this click and inside this click event we will call the function on delete into that function we just need to pass the employee id now let's define this function inside the typescript file So here we have the on delete function and it has a single parameter id which is of the type string inside the function we just need to delete that file store document first of all i will confirm the operation so we can call this confirm function inside that we will ask are you sure to to delete this record if user confirm the operation then only we will delete the corresponding employee record like we have done in employee component in order to work with file store we have to inject that angular file store here so private file store which is of the type angular file store now we just need to do this this dot file store dot document inside that we have the collection employees and we just need to pick a document using this id here so we can concat that here after that we just need to call the delete function delete so this will delete the corresponding employee record with given id after all we have to show the toaster notification so we have to inject the corresponding service class here private toaster which is of the type toaster service class now we can do this this dot toaster dot warning function can be called so that it will have a orange background and inside that we will show this message deleted successfully as a notification title i will set this emp register let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application now i want to delete this action cox record so click on this trash icon here then confirm the operation 
So here we have successfully deleted the corresponding employer code. If you check the fast.db, it should be removed from the also. We have left only one employee, Gina Jeans. So that's it guys. In this video, we have implemented fast chocolate operations with Angular 7. You can download this project source code from the github link given below in video description. If you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this please be subscribe to my channel Code of Action. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this. Have a nice day. Bye.